It's time for Tech Talk number 20. Math. I thought you'd say you don't like math. I don't like math. <laughs> I'm better at it than I used to be, but, you know. Yeah. Maybe that's not the thing to tell people if you're a technician. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But, you know, I was yeah, told, about five feet of cable. Yeah, that, you know, it's dead reckoning. It's <laughs> like, you know, line of sight. Anyway, we got lots of cool stuff on Tech Talk tonight. We're going to talk about more stuff about Catalina. It's... Not good. More warnings. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and we'd love your questions, too. Send them in to uh, the guys at VOBS.TV or in the chat room if you're watching us live right now so we can answer that question and totally amaze you with our brilliance when it comes to home voiceover studio. Or just make up something really convincing. Or something like that. Anyway, Tech Talk coming up right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came... Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey, it's time to do the favorite thing we do. Because I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS Tech, Tech Talk. Talk. You guys demand it, so we give it to you every other week. And we love doing it. And uh, it's amazing. I mean, we keep talking about it. We've been doing this for eight and a half years. And we haven't run out of things to talk about. <laughs> no, it never ends. That's the beauty of tech. I know. There's it's always new stuff. It's always new stuff. So and then were, there's old stuff. You yeah. were at WovoCon last week. Yeah. What Did anything pop up on your radar there by chance? I know it's not a tech convention, but did you see anything? Well, there, there was... Did they bring there, anything? Uh, I mean, there was lots of stuff about, yeah. uh, you know, voiceover performance and things like that. Right. And business and using technology in your business. Like how people to show and tell stuff sometimes. Oh, they do. They do. You know, there was some stuff on how to organize your computer. That's hugely <laughs> important. Yeah. Oh you know, man. How to organize your life. You know, and I think that's one of the good things about, you know, about Wovo and WovoCon is we talk about lifestyle because voiceover is a lifestyle. You know, yeah. we, we tend to be alone by ourselves mm -hmm. in these little boxes a lot of time. Yeah. And it's good to get out and talk to other people and how do they deal with the, uh, with these issues. Right. So uh, that was that was really good. So uh, since it's time for Tech Talk, it's time for George's Tech Update. And boy, you got a pile of stuff here. So never takes long. To delve into it, to talk about Mr. Wood. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, well, I'll just get it right out of the way, right out of the gate. Still don't install Catalina. Um, I'll keep saying it until people stop asking. It, well, the, the computer keeps asking me. It's, I know. You gotta, I'm like, eh, George said no. Type a little <laughs> Google search in if you're not afraid of doing some code which literally is copy pasting one line. Do a little Google search for how do I get my Mac to stop asking me to upgrade to Catalina? And there's actually something you can type into what's called terminal and it will stop nagging you. Oh, okay. Which the nagging maybe isn't the worst thing. The accidentally installing it when you didn't mean to is the problem. Right, when you turn it on in the morning, oh, oh, installing it. How many times have you done that on your phone, right? 
Oh, You're well, like, no, the, the, no, no, ignore tomorrow, tomorrow. Ah, oh, crap, I just did it in the middle of <laughs> XYZ event. So anyway, watch out for it. Another reason why it's not good to have right now is um, it does not support 32-bit apps, which arguably the majority of what you're going to be doing or running is probably not 32-bit. But if you've got some old apps, maybe you're running QuickBooks 2010 and you just never bothered to upgrade, you're going to break that immediately when you install or upgrade to oh, Catalina don't want and probably a bunch of other stuff too. So that's just another reason to be careful. Um, if you do have to buy a Mac and you're going to go buy a brand new Mac from Apple, it's probably going to have Catalina on it. So if that freaks you out, um, either a wait three or four months, or if that's not realistic, um, buy one from like a third party retailer that keep them in stock on the shelf. They'll have some stuff that's been sitting there for a few months. It's going to have Mojave. Um, you can also buy them refurbished or used even, which I recommend used and refurb all the time. Save a lot of money. A lot of money, yeah. The Apple refurb store, you're buying a Mac with a full warranty, Apple Care, the whole thing for a year, and it's as new. Right, and you can still upgrade it a little bit too. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that, I recommend that. Just double check, make sure you're not getting surprised with a, an OS that may not run everything you, you have to use. Um, thanks to Paul Strickwerda, who has the the blog called Nether Voice. Um, he found uh, or was approached one or the other by this new company that's not new. It's just a new name that's new to us, and it's okay. called Austrian Audio. And what Austrian, Austrian Audio is is actually the core crew from AKG, oh. the famous microphone company. Great Austrian microphone company. Yeah, I don't know stuff. what K and what's AKG stand for? Austrian capsule blah, 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 yeah, German blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. anyway AKG is now Austrian audio um, because AKG got bought they were part of Harman Harman got bought by Samsung Samsung Samsung's like oh we don't need to develop beautiful large diaphragm condenser mics bye bye so they're like fine we'll make them somewhere else and that's what they did he reviewed the OC18 microphone from them uh, on his blog, if you want to go read about it and geek out with him, you can hear sound samples at Nether Voice, his blog. Or you can go to nethervoice.com and find it there. Um, after reading about that, I did a little more searching, found out about their their OC818 microphone, a favorite of the va in the valley here. Everybody wants an 818, man, in the valley. Um, the 818 microphone is an interesting trick, is that it's a dual capsule mic. Which in voiceover, we often say not necessary. Why do you need anything more than a just a standard cardioid? But a cool trick, a uh, party trick of this microphone is the um, two capsules are controlled independently and it's oh. done through, uh, you control it through Bluetooth. So you install a little wow. app on your phone yeah. and you can set the polar <laughs> pattern of the microphone. And how many patterns does it have? I think it's infinite. Oh, wow. Like you can control exactly the pattern of the mic. It does a lot of interesting things that normally you'd have to buy more hardware. You'd have to have a more elaborate system. So you can plug this mic into a normal system and, and control all this stuff. Again, a little on the geek side, but their mics are still truly made in Austria and they're very competitive. Or like they're kind of right in line with that five hundred to thousand dollar pricing range that you'd expect you know for a real good pro pro mic right any so, and any mic in that price range is going to be just fine for yeah, you Yeah, you're not going to go wrong definitely recommend <clears throat> delving deep real deep with uh on the blog from paul and yeah. read about because yeah. he he has some good sound samples yeah. now you had an interesting stuff go on with some interfaces this week i know we talk right. about the apollo a lot because it's everybody it's pretty wants slick and i haven't i've talked about it a lot it does a lot of stuff the problem with the universal audio apollo is um they had a real hard time getting the thunderbolt protocol to be properly supported on windows systems sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so then they launched a usb version which does work on windows systems mostly um, the problem is, is that their driver support on windows on the windows side, isn't so hot. Uh, one of my voiceover clients, she unfortunately went down the rabbit hole with this whole thing, started out with the Apollo, had a lot of bugs and a lot of issues with her Apollo on USB on windows 10. It was very frustrating. Then she swapped it for an RME baby face about the same price, 
pretty high end piece of kit was overwhelmed with the complexity of it. I mean, the console that it has is mind blowing to learn how to use it first. Why, yeah, why bother with some of the sophisticated stuff if you don't know how to use it? It's complicated. It's the quality of the, the unit is undeniably good. RME has always been good, but so complicated. And therefore, she was having trouble with that as well. And in the end, I said, you know what? Just go get a Steinberg UR22. They're way less expensive, but the quality, it, you're not going to suffer. The, the quality won't suffer in no any gonna appreciable way. Yeah. For a quarter of the price, she went and got a Steinberg UR22, maybe an eighth. What does it work out to? It's it's a huge, it's much less expensive. Um, and she was kind of blown away. She's like, you mean this just works? And when I do this and I turn that knob, then I can hear myself or now I can't or like, I just, that's it. Like that's, I'm like, yes, that's it. And then the one little trick it has up its sleeve that I always tell people about is it has loop back. It's the only thing that it doesn't have a physical button on it. It's in the driver and it did catch her up because for whatever reason it was checked by default. Uh, so she was doing a Skype session, recording an audition, so the caller is being recorded. That's great if you're recording an, a, a podcast interview. Right. Not good if you're just being directed and you don't want to record the other person. That caught her off guard, but so watch out for that. But yes, it does have loopback, which is pretty awesome, but just by checking a box. Wow. Works on Mac and on Windows. Yeah, but you have to be savvy to make sure you learn how to run through all these menus and stuff, and you learn well, to do that. Well, it's a beauty. This thing literally has one setting window, and in there is a checkbox. Loopback? That's it. Go for it. <laughs> like, it's simple. Wow. I love it. So it's, it, the hardware's fantastic. Um, I have yet to be let down by the Steinberg product. The failure rate has been extremely low, and I've just been really happy. As opposed to some other models, which we're hearing lots of problems from. Everything from the from the Focusrite all the way up to Universal, failure rates are a little bit higher, and, and just anecdotally. I don't have proof to say that one's better than another, but I'll tell you, Steinberg's been holding up. Mm -hmm. So kind of the takeaway, really, is, is, is avoiding USB, the Apollo for Windows. The drivers aren't quite up to, to they're not quite up to date. There's problems with Chrome. So if you're using IPDTL right. or Source Connect now, you're going to have trouble. It's, it's, it's buggy. So that gets me to another thing, drivers. Um, you know, the ongoing Mac versus Windows debate will never die. Never. And I'm never, I'm <laughs> never, I'm never going to avoid it. I'm always going to tack it head on because I support both users and I support them a lot. And so what I tell people is, is, one of the things that sets them apart dramatically is how simple the audio hardware setup is on the Mac. Um, there is a sound driver that, so when you go into Twisted Wave or Audition, it's going to show you core audio. Core That's audio, the name. Right. And then it's going to show you what devices you have available. So if you've got like a USB mic preamp or if you've got multiple things plugged in, they all just show up it, under the it list. It just says, I know what that yeah, is. Built-in audio, whatever. It's, it's yeah. just there. And it's it's pretty st it's very stable. Um, it allows the the core audio driver system allows say Audition and Zoom to run side by side, sharing the same hardware, and they don't step on each other, and everything's happy, pretty much all the time. Um, on the Windows side of things, you're not going to see a single driver. You're going to see a minimum two, usually three, and the three that you see the most often are MME, Wasapi. And ASIO. So I thought, take a few more minutes. Talk What's about what the heck those things are, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had an article I was going to reference against here. It's actually from Sweetwater.com. Uh -huh. So MME, probably the most common. It's probably the one you've seen the most. Any Windows system you ever open, you're going to see an MME sound driver. Um, that's the Microsoft Multimedia Environment. It's native to Windows. And it's the first audio driver made on Windows in version 3.1. So it's an extremely old system. Um, Built-in sound cards, they all use it. Um, and most PC audio software supports it. It's the most widely supported. If you plug in your USB device, chances are it will just automatically, uh, if it doesn't require any more complicated console, um, it will just recognize it as an MME device and you're off to the races. Um, the downside of it is um, your 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 box. Let's say it's the Steinberg UR22. 
and audition are not talking directly to each other. They're actually talking to each other through your Windows control panel. So, so like an interpreter. In the yes, day. yes. And the problem with that is um, if Windows decides to bring a, a gain up and down on a microphone, which can happen when you're running Skype or when you're running Zoom, they have that little checkbox automatically adjust level. Right. Guess what? The recording level in your software does the same thing. It goes up and down. I've, I've seen it happen. Oh, my God. It's insane. It's crazy making. Um, so that's a reason to not use MME. Now, going down the list, Wasapi is the Windows Audio Session API. Um, this is newer technology, employs methods for directly sending audio to the hardware's output called exclusive mode. Um, let's see, it, it allows for Dolby and DTS encoded surround. Not too relevant to what we're doing at all. Um, this mode also will not allow other applications to use the hardware simultaneously. Another good reason to probably not use it because chances are if you want to run Zoom while you're in Audition or uh, Audacity or something, right. you're not going to have, they're not going to play that well together. Lastly is ASIO, ASIO, GIF, GIF. Everybody knows, a ASIO seems ASIO. to be the one that's, it's like, oh, you need the ASIO driver. For yeah, that. ASIO. So ASIO, another, another little, you know, plug for Steinberg is actually a driver format invented by Steinberg. So probably a reason they're so good at drivers. Um, they've been around forever. Um, it was designed to improve latency and channel count. So you can have many inputs of audio from one device. It allows the software to bypass Windows audio and give you direct communication to the hardware. So if you want the most bomb-proof, reliable way to connect your audio device to Audition, you want to use ASIO because there's no windows in between, not to worry about windows control panel, messing with things, changing settings, stuff like that. Um, the only thing you gotta look out for there is, there is occasionally an issue where it does not share well with others. So once ASIO is given, let's say once Audition is given access to your hardware through ASIO, it may not let Zoom share your, share your hardware. Yeah. Sometimes the order that you launch them matters. Launch Audition, then launch Zoom. Um, Pro Tools, same deal. Launch Pro Tools, then launch Zoom. We have found this to be a pretty repeatable thing on Windows. Um, so these are just things to look out for. And another reason why generally on the Mac side of things, it just simplifies your life. Plug it in it's, and oh, it works. so much easier. Um, does the sound quality change? No. Can you run a lot of the same programs? Yes. Um, is there a twisted way for Windows? No. Will there ever be? Probably not. Well, there's the online version. There's the online version, and if he ever makes it as good as the desktop version, then maybe I could recommend it, but it's still pretty stripped down. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with PCs. No, I except mean... Except they, they're just not the best for audio. They're just... Yeah, there's too many variables. If you're a techie person, you like customization... You really like to control the environment. Yeah, PC makes a lot of sense. Uh, but for everybody else creative out there that just wants an appliance that does their job, it's, you know, Mac, I think, is really the way to go. Um, anyway, that's it for my little tech news update. Boy, that's we a, definitely have some questions to get to. I'm so. Absolutely. One of the things I wanted to talk about, because, you know, I was at WovoCon last yes. weekend. And uh, aside from, you know, my voice still not back from that. <laughs> I think it's probably somewhere <laughs> between Barstow and Barker. Yeah. Or Baker. Um, <laughs> Barker, Baker. Baker, Barker. Yeah. Um, is when you go to conferences or you seek advice from people who are experts at recording audio. Most of them have no idea what it is you're doing. Like I always warn people, you know, when you go to Banjo Emporium, don't tell them you're trying to create a voiceover studio at home because they hear recording studio and their frame of reference is generally the production of music. Singer, songwriter, mic and a guitar, right. et cetera, et cetera. Bass, drum, okay, you know, right. put, put the, the, the mic on that, that sort of thing. Right. In a pristine audio uh, in, in a uh, controlled environment, like a, a studio, environment. a sterile and neutral recording environment. Mm -hmm. They have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, 
If you're in your walk-in closet with a lot of down jackets and stuff like that, your sound may be actually better than their studio. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> if I've heard it. You know, I mean, you know, I've heard studios here in L.A. where I've heard flushing toilets in the background. Mm -hmm. Not a good thing. Um, but they don't really understand the limitations of most people who are trying to get into voiceover or are been in voiceover for a long time, but now they're like, oh, I have to have a home studio. Right. So, you know, these, these are people who are always in other people's studios mm -hmm. and, you know, they're, they're highly paid professionals and, right. you know, you know, they don't have to do the engineering. Well, now they do. Yeah. And so a couple of things here. One, if you ask the engineer and this goes, you know, I mean, we've been talking about this for like 10 years. If you ask the engineer, how do I build a home studio? He doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of interest in you taking his job away. Right. So he is going to tell you how he does it. In other words, you're asking for the time. He's going to tell you how I to build to watch. a watch. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I, I have I have seen these presentations before, and I and I tell people, don't talk over their heads. Yep. Be very careful in what you say. Don't tell them about things that they will never have to know mm -hmm. nor understand. Plus, it took you 10, 15 years to learn how to do this. They're not going to learn it in a phone call. Right. Or in a, you know, well, you, you know, you got to use Pro Tools. That's the industry standard. Well, then the question becomes, which industry? Mm -hmm. You know, are you in the recording studio industry? Are you producing soundtracks for major uh, Hollywood films you know, or film for post? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, these are these are all things that they do. And there's a lot of post studios here in L.A., but that's what they do. Right. As voice actors, we're providing them one tiny little thing, a mono file that has no background noise or minimal background noise. Right. And it's properly modulated and you're using your mic properly. Right. That's it essentially you're recording yourself with a tape and right. then mailing them the tape right except we're doing the extremely modern version of that right dig digitally recording it and sending it to them over the internet right and, and that's so the way i describe it is like you remember a cassette recorder you know it's record oh that's right you had to press play too at the same time to record <laughs> and and let it record yeah right and, you know and then there's rewind and all. that's all it is the, this this guy here he's a tape recorder Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not on tape. It's on some magnetic or, you know, flash a, storage. A flash storage. Right. And, it, and that's, it's the same thing. All it is, is it's taking that information and turning it into ones and zeros that the computer can understand and turn it into the graphic representation that we see of the audio. And a question that we're going to answer after the break actually talks about that exact topic. Exactly. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Yeah. So my advice, and I'm sure you probably agree with me on most of this, being an audio geeky guy mm -hmm. who really likes all this stuff, you and I have seen it. I mean, these guys try to talk over people's heads because they really don't understand the situation that many people are in and that they're not going to be doing multi-tracking. They're not going yeah. to be, you know, doing these sorts of things. You work with a lot of people who do promo work, right. which is a handful of people. Yeah, it is. And and you set you set the you know the uh, you know the stacks for them, and because they have to do it live, and live and, they, and very quickly, right? And very and, short turn. Exactly, and that ninety nine point nine percent of the people in voiceover, it's nothing to do with you. Yeah, you know now for audiobooks and things like that, and some of the mastering, and you know, and for certain auditions, absolutely vital that you know they have that type of assistance, but. To try and teach people how to do this without really telling them what it's supposed to sound like, mm -hmm. whistle, whistle. Um, it's you know it's not really fair. And are they doing it deliberately, or are they doing it, you know, out of ignorance for really, yeah. you know, or they just want to show off of how much show off how much they know right. about recording? There's a reason why voiceover. I got into what I'm doing. There's a reason I do what I do for a living now because that is the case for most all engineers. There's a few small exceptions, but in general, or exceptions, exceptions, there's a few out there, but generally that's the case in most cases. And that's why I got into doing what I do, because there was not anybody doing that thing, working with voice actors that uh, on their level, communicating on their level, in their not talking down to them or right. over their heads right? and just getting them the knowledge they need in a very concise way. There was just nobody doing it. 
and that's why I'm George the Tech. Right. And that's why I got into doing it, and that's the same for you. Yeah. You and I started doing it around the same time. Getting yeah, pretty much. Consulting home studios and working with voice actors, because it's just too much misinformation. Yeah. And yeah. intimidation. Yeah. And the great th part about it is we've been doing it for 10, 15 years. Yeah. Really, more like 15 Over, years. Yeah, almost 15. Look yeah. at the experience that we've gotten yeah. from doing it specifically in this particular niche where everybody else is like guessing how to do it. And yeah. we know how to adjust it for different situations, but we know what we know what the sausage is supposed to taste like. <laughs> <laughs> right. We happen to know how to make it too. That's the funny thing. That's right. But nobody needs to see it. <laughs> right. Like this one here. Nobody needs to see it, but we're showing it to you anyway. There you go. As Bruce Burrell's uh, booth. In the, hey, it's creative. It sounds good. Who cares? Right. They don't need to see it. Yeah, exactly. You know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, if you want to help with your home voiceover studio, clearly we know what we're talking about, and we'll be the first ones to tell you that. Uh, but if you want to work with George, where do you go? You go to? Uh, I'm over at georgethe.tech, for those that like those short domains. And uh, I've got a whole list of services on there on a service menu. Uh, you can also book me uh, for live consulting on location at your site consulting um there's also do it yourself or self-service uh consulting where you send me files and i send stuff back like a sound check all right and dan does sound checks but he uses a specimen cup over at homevoiceoverstudio.com make right. sure you go over there and you know there's lots of services we offer we advise we give you the best advice we know how it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to get done and especially for you, because every situation is a little bit different. So you want the expertise to know how to make it work for you and not for some guy who's sitting in a, you know, a half million dollar studio. Hiring us is like a, is a massive shortcut. Incredible shortcut. Massive shortcut. You can Google this stuff. You can read forums. You can ask all your peers. You can consolidate all that data and come up with an answer, which might take weeks, months, or years. Or you can hire one of us for like an hour. Absolutely. Be like set. Yeah. And boy, we can accomplish a lot in an hour. We sure can. You know, as many times as I want, I don't know what I'm doing. I walk out, they're recording. Yeah. See you later. Well, yeah. Give me a call if you need to have any more questions. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'd love your questions. We've got a couple of questions we want to tackle here, but mm -hmm. you can still get them in the chat room and we will be happy to answer them here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 20, in case you're keeping track. I know I am. Uh, and uh, we'll be right back after these. Un in unbelievably important messages, so don't go away. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. All righty. You know, our good friend Harlan Hogan has been out sailing the coastline of Maine for the last nine days and had several political spots to record. So with his trusty Portabooth and new MicPort Pro 2L, he tackled them in any reasonably quiet spot, including a large shower room. The audio across the board was spectacular. No one had any clue he didn't record these in his whisper room at home, and these are regular clients who would notice any difference. I'll tell you something. Mike Goodman and Xentrance, they those guys have got a real winner with the new MicPort Pro 2L. If you're a recording professional, you already know the original Sentrance MicPort Pro. It was great. It was it was modern. It was you could take any microphone. It was the best go-to AD converter out there for voice actors, broadcasters and and all the in any place, location, recordists, anyone and everyone who wanted a state of the art incredibly small USB connection to their favorite studio quality mic. And you could do it with a MicPort Pro. Now with the new MicPort Pro 2L, it's even better. So many details. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com, read up on it, and hey, you're going to want one. They're worth every penny because they give you tremendous portability. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com, best place to do that. Go to the bottom of our homepage here and click on the picture of Harlan talking into his Portabooth Pro, which he now uses with his MicPort Pro 2 L R. All right. Thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor here for eight and a half years on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Well, hello there. 
I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey, everybody. This is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of, another one of our wonderful sponsors, and that is Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. Um, this is an incredibly powerful tool for all professional voice actors because this is really the tool that's most widely used in commercial professional studios around the world to record voice actors remotely. And this is uh, one that you should highly consider having in your arsenal, along with all the other ones that are out there. There are some that run on web browsers. This is not one of those. This is a dedicated standalone application you install, runs on Windows or Mac, and uh, you can buy it as a one-time license that never expires, one-time purchase, or you can subscribe and then have ongoing support for upgrades and service uh, ongoingly. Get a demo. 14 days for free, go to source-elements.com, have that demo on your machine up and running, get your iLock account going so you can run it, don't need an iLock, little USB key, and be ready to go so when that client or that agent says, do you have Source Connect? You can say yes. You can go check it out right away. Tell them we sent you, and we'll be right back to answer all those tech questions right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Hey, we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop, uh, Tech Talk. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've been doing, you know, I, I collect old radios. Mm -hmm. And make them work, mm -hmm. which is a lot I'm of fun. Staring at the collection right I mean, now. I know, and it, it's only going to grow. If you're going to come in here, eventually there won't be any room for us. It'll all be radios. <laughs> you know, especially my 1942 Zenith where I've got, you know, the great thing about it is I've got my, my Echo Dot plugged into it. And I can say, you know, <laughs> you know, play some classical music or play, you know, Benny Goodman yeah, or which Count sounds, Basie. Or, which sounds so authentic through that old radio. Absolutely, because it's using the amplifier from the old radio. Yeah. And the old speaker, which is a, like a, a field coil speaker. People, a field coil? They didn't know how to make magnets back then. So they sent... Electromagnets. They, they made yeah. an electromagnet. Right. And it, it, complicated electronics. But I've been getting into the FM radios. Mm -hmm. The 1948 FM radios. Now, those you of you were a who, real geek in, in 48, if you were listening to FM, right? Yeah, but they were making these tabletop radios yeah. with, with FM in them. And it was, it's like really cool because anytime I turn it on, and of course, if once you attach a good antenna to it, which mm -hmm. is really important with a radio, out comes this music that has just a slightly different tone to it <laughs> that is very different from the digital sound that we use today, which is what you're trying to achieve. You know, yeah, you might want some kind of warmth, but is that authentic? It's it's altering your voice a little bit. Anyway, it's really cool because, you know, I put on a classical station mm -hmm. and immediately my father is with me. <laughs> Very nostalgic. It, it, it's great. You know, it's really like a time machine and uh, and it's fun. And, and I'm learning how to do body work on these things, which That's is funny. actually kind of cool. Did you too. actually see that they're speaking of nostalgic? Yeah. There is a now a, I think it might be a Kickstarter. I can't recall. For a home record cutting lathe, <laughs> I think it's going to be like a thousand or twelve hundred bucks. Right, but it's a desktop unit. You put your blank vinyl on, and you can cut your own vinyl records. Wow, <laughs> which is, I mean, you know, that used to be something you do not do at home. Well, it used it, to be a big machine. Right, you gave me one for my birthday. Well, yeah, I gave you, and it makes horrible <laughs> sounding records, mind that, you. Well, yeah, but it's a proof of concept, right. and it shows how it works. I got one for Ella. I have to build it yet. Yeah. 
but it's the cool. Jap- but the, this- the instructions are in Japanese, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but this thing is a. I don't know, you know, the quality of what it cuts, but it's a. You know, it makes a legit vinyl cut record that right. you can master to. Yeah, to any audio, you know, those audiophile gigs that are into vinyl. You know, here, check this one out. <laughs> Just oh, that sounds real. great. Yeah, really. <laughs> anyway, we got a question here from uh, Eric, and Eric says. Hi, George and Dan. Uh, tech talk question. Last week you mentioned recording voiceover on an iPad. I record my Sennheiser 41.6 through Zoom, through a Zoom H6, and he's using it as an audio interface, mm-hmm. um, to an iPad Pro, the 2017 version, running Twisted Wave, <laughs> and it sounds pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Um, it also is very easy to use with a touch screen and totally quiet. That is a nice thing about an iPad or a tablet. Makes no noise. fan, touch screen. Um, using the Steinberg UR22 Mark II. Well, that Steinberg is getting a lot of love tonight. Yeah. Um, with external power, um, because the iPad may not power the Steinberg properly without its own power supply. Um, uh, do you have any comments about the sound quality of recording on an iPad? With an interface like he's using, professional interface, compared to recording on a MacBook or a Mac Mini with the same interface. Same thing. As far as I know, quality should not be, there should be no difference in quality. It's just a device that collects data. It's streaming in bits. And bytes. And your (laughs) Mac or your iPad is capturing that and, and allowing you to edit it later. The quality is in the AD converter and the preamp and the mic. It's all the upstream stuff, mic, preamp, converter. That's the quality determination. And, of course, going further upstream, your mic placement and then your acoustics, acoustics which, which are, we talk about all the which time. Is your primary That's concern. That's by far. But once you have the acoustics and the mic placement and the right microphone and the right AD preamp and the AD converter, Way down the bottom of the list is the rest of it, and one of those and is... And you can do it on your phone. Yeah, and you can do that on an, on really any device. It comes down to what device do you like to interact with. Um, I don't have a lot of, like, real-world experience using an iPad for recording. I, I set it up. I set up processing on it and know how to functionally do it. But every time I go to make that edit, it always feels a little fiddly. It doesn't feel mm. quite as... Well, it depends Elegant. on the program you're using. I mean, using, I, you I, used to, I use Twisted Wave on the iPad, right. and it's you, you, you zoom in really tight. You look for the little dots, cross it's the pinching, line, right? Pinching, a lot of pinching. It, it's well, it's it's separating. Yeah, you know, lifting and separating. It's <laughs> you know, you're you're you're, you're zooming in on the audio on the wave yeah. file, yeah, and it breaks it down into the you know the little you know points on the the. Uh, the sample scale, yeah, and as long as you go between those dots, mm-hmm. it's not going to make any. It's not going to make any noise. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. very tactile. Yeah, you know, but it's if your brain, if you look, if you know how to hand you 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 know you you sign your name the same way every time. Yeah. When you're doing that type of editing, you know, one way with a mouse and and your computer, and you go to just using your, it's yeah. the same thing, yeah. and you know, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it can work. Yeah. Should it be your primary way of doing things? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I mean, the new iPad Pro with there's a Mac OS, there's an I'm, iOS version. What am I saying? There's an iPad version of iOS. Right. That has a few more functions that make it a little bit more like a regular OS. Mm-hmm. But there's still not a real iOS. It still doesn't have like a normal file structure and. There's little things that are a little, a little frustrating. Yeah. So I wouldn't recommend it as my daily driver. Okay. Uh, well, but you could be practical in that. You could record and read your script in your booth with your iPad. Then when you go to edit and do the rest, go walk over to your computer, plug it in, sync it over, or just do it over Dropbox or something. Right. And then sit down and do the rest on the computer, right. which would be another way to yeah. do it. Well, I'm debating right now, and there's, there's a little bit more to this question, but I'm debating right now about how I read my copy. I used to have a, a regular monitor. I used to have a mat regular monitor in the, uh, in the studio. Right. And you know, and you can control things from in there using a Bluetooth mouse and stuff. I don't think it affected the audio quality inside the booth all that much, okay. especially if you angle it properly. Right. Uh, but 
through happenstance, I had to take it out because the way we were doing the show and stuff. And I've gone back to using paper again. Mm -hmm. And I remember like early on when we started doing the show, I talked about how there, I was creating the tower of Babel of paper mm -hmm. right. and that we wanted to save the trees. Right. And, uh, so, but I went back to a printer until of course it ran out of ink. <laughs> <sighs> you know, it's, uh, I just reminded, this just reminded me of something. I promise we'll finish the question, but my friend Mike sent me an article about a Japanese college student yeah. who did a term paper about ninja warriors yeah. and wrote the paper in disappearing ink <laughs> made using the traditional Japanese, Japanese ninja, ninja formula, yeah, yeah. which he worked on for apparently a long time to get it right. Proved it. And then she <laughs> wrote the whole thing in disappearing ink, gave it to the professor, attached a note saying, heat the paper. <laughs> when you heat the paper, the soy-based ink starts burn, to turn black, black and yeah. it was hilarious. So I just had this weird that, idea. That's a funny story. I, of <laughs> Instead of having to, you know, having a stack of paper, right. why don't you just print it in disappearing ink? And then, so just, last, and, and well, then just keep reusing the same piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, something like okay. not like the reverse of what she did. She right. hers was disappearing, and then she had to make it appear. Is wouldn't there be like an ink where you could print it? It lasts for you know an hour, yeah, right? And then, and then it fades away, and you just reload the printer with the same paper. Wouldn't that work? There's a million dollar idea in there. <laughs> Come on, make, sounds like a good idea to me. me. Anyway, <laughs> I started using the iPad again yeah. in my studio, okay. or and sometimes my iPhone. If my iPad, which seems to lose, sometimes you just battery, have the iPhone. It's a short script, and just that's right. Read like it. it's right there, yeah. you know. And 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 you know, and then that's the great thing about it. I just have a music stand. I can put anything there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. the rest of this question though has to do with the iPad. And this is P.S. You also discussed exporting files from the iPad. Always a pain in the toes. Always has been. An easy way is to upload them from Twisted Wave to a Dropbox and download them from there to your computer for further editing if needed, through a Wi-Fi connection, even if large files just take a few minutes to upload. I should have read the whole many. question because we talked about that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Dropbox, I think, is the easiest. Um, there are certainly other ways, but um, Twisted Wave has Dropbox built in. So once you put in your user and pass, it will just I'll give you an option. Put it on Dropbox. Right. And you sit down at your computer in the other room. By the time you, you've walked to your other computer, the files are there right immediately you yeah. can start working yeah. but they're they're trying to make it easier to transfer files aren't they yeah. i think so but i don't know why apple sucks at cloud stuff they have icloud and they have some cloud tools and they do have some slick stuff like airshare where you can i you know he can send you a file Air, to your Air ipad time. yeah yeah uh, there's there are some cool things but it still just doesn't integrate a cross-platform very well. Right. Like, let's say you work on a Windows machine. It's not going to work. So I Dropbox is really great. Another thing Dropbox did recently on the Dropbox topic is they doubled your storage. Right. So I'm paying for the Dropbox, I guess, pro account for $10 a month. Now it's two terabytes of stuff you can put in there. I have my entire working file, like my entire company file on there. Right. Like every client folder, everything. It's about 900 gig. Right. And I got plenty of storage left. And I, it's great just to have everything at my fingertips. A client will, I'll be out and about. The client will say, oh, that stack file, you forgot to send it. You forgot to put it in the full. Oh, crap. There, I'm sorry. Here's a link to it. You know right. what? There it is. And I've, it's so I've nice. got pictures from the 90s. <laughs> and right. MP3s from the 90s yeah. that are on you know, hard drives, you know, in the storage area here. And yeah. I'm like, you know, with two terabytes, just make sure to make another copy, make it last mm -hmm. another 20 years. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Hopefully. I've been pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, short tech talk tonight. Didn't get a lot of questions, but that's quite okay because we had plenty I to talk about. Talk, I think we talked well along, <laughs> right. long enough tonight. So that's, that's fine with me, but folks definitely send in your tech talk questions for next time. We'll be back in two weeks with more of that. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, if you come next week when we actually tape it live, right? We tape it live and then we air it the following week. But if you want to be here live for that to ask your questions, tune in next week, right? At the same time, right? We'd love to have you here in the studio too. So if you want to do that, write to us at the guys at vobs.tv. Yep. All righty. 
Well, we're going to take another break, and then we'll wrap it up into a nice tight little ball right after this. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George Snail. and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Meow. Snails like it too. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, you want to know something? We get asked a lot of questions, but what question do we get asked most often? Far and away, it's how do you even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer for you. Take VO Heroes free getting started in VO class. You heard right. It's free. It's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class, taught to you by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. You got nothing to lose. Want to take it? Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Well, another Tech Talk. In the can. It's in the can. As or in say. the cans. In the can. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. All right. Uh, well, next week we'll have another wonderful guest on this show. Someone who will enlighten us and make our lives easier as voice actors or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do need some help with when it comes to support of the show. And you can donate to the show and help us maintain the technical integrity that you have come to realize. We're no longer every week it's Apollo 13, for those of you who've been with us for, you know, eight and a half We've years. We've smoothed out a lot of stuff. Oh. It's taken a while. <laughs> Quite a long time. The right time, people, but... the right technology, yeah. and, you know, yeah. when you go back at version one. Yeah, just... <laughs> Heck, version three ain't so, weren't but, so yeah, hot either. Really, it was, we were gluing <laughs> these things together every yeah. week. But what helps is if you donate to the show, and you can do that by being here at our, our website and clicking on Donate Now. 
mm-hmm. and you can give us whatever you want to give us. You can give us a buck. buck. You can give us a buck every month. You can subscribe. Um, this list of names right here, a lot of them are subscribers because we read their names practically every show, like Christy Burns, Joseph Harrison, Michelle Blenker, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Speaks for You, and Shelly Avellino. Those names should be familiar with you to you because we've read them a lot. That's right. But we'd like to see your name on there, too. It's and audio SEO, folks. That's right. Is there such a thing? <laughs> we read your name and people, oh, what's that name, Shelly Avellino? I know that name. Yeah. Is there audio recognition? We'll find Get the out. VOBS bump. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For a bump. Most important thing you can do. But, uh, you know, we're giving you some great information here. And boy, I don't want to sound like public radio, but, you know, it's our fun drive. But anyway, if you could donate now, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, show us your booths. Gotta love it when somebody uses the camouflage. <laughs> the camouflage blankets from, from Harbor Freight. They, it's, they work great. <laughs> You double them up, and they're as good as anything else. And half that's the, a key you know, thing. the price. Second layer, big difference. I yeah. recommend. Yeah, it works really well. Mm-hmm. The camouflage itself doesn't really make a difference in its ability to diffuse audio at all. But <laughs> only conf- only to confuse your opponents. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it might help with. <laughs> you do you know if you do a live session, have your camera on. I mean, yeah, I'm in a duck blind. I w- actually, I went out mountain biking on Sunday. Yeah. Deer hunting season is open. Uh-oh. And we're up there Got going out. Faster. We're going out. We see, like, the occasional hunter. Yeah. And I'm like, you know the difference between a mountain biker and a deer, right? Just, yeah. to, just to be absolutely Just don't wear a brown jacket with, clear. with a fur collar, and, oh. and you'll, you'll be fine. I definitely wear a fluorescent. All right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you want to show us your booths like uh, Bruce Burl did here, send it to us at theguys at vobs.tv. Again, in landscape, landscape, not portrait, not portrait, and in sixteen, you know, sixteen by nine, not by four by three. Ideally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can a camera still takes pictures like that? Yeah. Anyway, hey, if you like to be in our audience and watch us make fools of ourselves live, <laughs> uh, all you have to do is write to us again at that same address, uh, the guys at vobs TV, and if you're in the greater Los Angeles area, we'd love to have you on our couch. Mm-hmm. And you can it's stare at us and ask questions. One. Oh, it's a big comfy couch. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't that a kids show? Big comfy, big couch. comfy couch. It was actually. I believe you. Okay. Uh, Already. Uh, let's see. We need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, Vo Heroes dot com, Voice Actor Websites dot com, and J Michael Collins Demo. Also, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Betterment. And, of course, our own Sue Merlino, our amazing technical director, and her kid, Mike, who Mike. was running the chat room Yes, today. he was. Thanks, Mike. All right. Appreciate it. He's not doing it for his mom. He's doing it because he wants to learn <laughs> Everything show that production. We that's and right. show production, yeah. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We'll see you next week. And uh, send in your questions. Send in your comments. Send in your donations. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS Tech Tech Talk. Talk. See you guys. Bye, everybody.